tonight from 1 Peter chapter 3. And what we're going to find in this passage tonight is it is written, this passage is written to saved wives of unsaved husbands. Its purpose is to reveal the path that the wives needed to take in order to see that their unsaved husbands had the greatest opportunity possible to come to God. And so it reads here, Likewise, ye wives, be in subjection to your own husbands, <clears throat> that if any obey not the word, they also may, without the word, be won by the conversation of the wives. While they behold your chaste conversation coupled with fear, whose adorning let it not be that outward adorning of the plaiting of the hair and of wearing of gold or of putting on of apparel, but let it be the hidden man of the heart in that which is not corruptible, even the ornament of a meek and a quiet spirit which is in the sight of God of great price. And I'm going to talk to you tonight for just a little bit on this subject, the hidden man of the heart. Lord, talk to us tonight in a powerful way. Lord, let us grow because of your word. Let us receive your word. Let us mature because of your word. Plead the blood of Jesus on these, your people, anew and afresh. Lord God, do incredible things to the people that are watching tonight online. I pray that your blessings would rest upon them. Order their steps, God, the rest of this week. Do incredible things in each of their lives. I pray it in the precious name of the Lord Jesus. And everybody said, Amen. You may be seated. Hallelujah. <clears throat> so let's go back now and read from our opening anew. Peter writes here, Likewise, ye wives, be in subjection to your own husbands, that if any obey not the word, they also may be without, they may without the word be won by the conversation of the wives, while they behold your chaste conversation coupled with fear. Peter's saying here, if the wife after salvation takes the proper biblical role, if she comes under subjection to her spouse, where before perhaps there was rebellion, now there's yieldedness, where before there was a whole lot of dishonor taking place, now there's honor and respect. Her new position can impact the saved to be willing to acknowledge if God had worked this well for my wife, well, maybe he'll work this well for me, too. So that chase conversation, that change in attitude, all of a sudden this man who doesn't want anything to do with God, all of a sudden he's saying, well, wait a minute, there's a mighty change that's taken place in my wife. And so if it'll work for her, maybe God will do something for me. And then Peter said to the wives, whose adorning, let it not be that outward adorning of plaiting the hair, of wearing of gold, or of putting on the apparel. The point being, wives, you're, you're not going to win your lost husbands to God by, just by dressing beautifully. You're not going to win him by wearing gold in or woven into your hair. Verse 4 then said, but let it be the hidden man of the heart in that which is not corruptible, even the ornament of a meek and a quiet spirit, which in the sight of God is of great price. So first, Peter said, comes submission, with the exception being wives weren't to submit to wickedness. They weren't to submit to ungodliness. Next come the importance of wives' conversation with her husband, the point being, does she speak to her husband with respect? Does she treat her husband with honor? Is she respectful or disrespectful? Is she loving or loveless? Is she constructive or is she destructive? Then comes clarity concerning how these changes will work in that it's the hidden man 
of the heart that's not corruptible, that has now stepped to the forefront of the wife's life, a meek and quiet spirit rises up within her, which in the sight of God is of great price. Some of you women say, I don't know about that Peter guy, huh? I don't know so much about that Peter guy. I want you to know Peter knew a whole lot about how to get people to heaven. Well, amen, glory to God. It was him, it was Peter who delivered the keys to the kingdom of heaven. So, you know, he's got a little wisdom working in his life. And, and maybe he was an old rascal before, but, but something, well, we know something changed in his life. Amen? One said, but I'm trying to win my husband to God. Uh, maybe a husband is saying, I'm trying to win my wife. I'm trying to win my best friend. I'm, I'm trying to win a co-worker. I'm trying to win an uncle. I'm trying to win an aunt. Peter has the answer, and the answer is found again in the revelation or the revealing of the hidden man of the heart that is uncorruptible. Even the ornament of a meek and a quiet spirit, which is in the sight of God of great price. Peter's preaching to wives and saying, how you treat your unsaved husbands matters. Your demeanor, your expressions, your, your manner, your deportment, your disposition matters. And these things are to come into being because God's spirit has entered into your lives. Let me read it again. 1 Peter 3, 4, But let it be the hidden man of the heart, in that which is not corruptible, even the ornament of a meek and a quiet spirit, which is in the sight of God of great price. You know, if you have the baptism of the Holy Ghost, then you've got the Spirit of God living in. I'm telling you, God is in you. And God can work through you. How you treat people at the cash register at Walmart, whether they're rude or not, matters. Well, amen. How you treat people on the street, whether you speak to them kindly or, or whether you look at them with an old ungodly look, or just an old mean look, all of these things matter. And I'm telling you, if you've got the baptism of the Holy Ghost, we're supposed to be showing forth Jesus Christ. And so what in the world is the hidden man of the heart? It's... God in us, the hope of glory. It's receiving God's power into our lives. And this inner filling is in direct contrast to our outer man. You've been hearing me talk about this flesh. The, these old outer, outer coverings that, that are willful a lot of times. I mean, they're strong. They, they, they just got pride they, they consume, pride consumes us. All of these things are, are indicative of the outer man. And so Peter is saying here, don't give in to your flesh. You say, somebody upset me today? Well, just, just find you a quiet place and pray through over it because you might find a soul that you come in contact with that you could just give them a word and encourage them today. You say, well, I had a bad happening on the job. Well, find you a quiet place and just say, Lord, you're going to have to help me here because I may meet somebody today that needs you, and I don't want to be the reason that they can't find you, God. So, Lord, I want that hidden man to rise up. I want that hidden man that is not corruptible. I want that ornament of a meek and a quiet spirit, which in the sight of God is of great price. You say, well, what is my number one priority after receiving the baptism of the Holy Ghost, after having the blood of Jesus Christ applied to my life? It's about sharing the gospel. It's about being a good Christian. It's about showing people what God does for us when he comes into our lives. I'll tell you what, your life, you got to say that your life had to change when God came into your life. you got to say it. You just know I'm telling the truth here. When God comes into a life, our worlds change. Our priorities change. The things that, that used to be so important to us are no longer that important. Amen. Well, amen. 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 So, friends, nothing greater than having God in our lives. Anybody remember when you received the baptism of the Holy Ghost? Anybody remember, I mean, do you remember what, what happened, where you were at 
Was it in this building that you received the baptism of the Holy Ghost? Anybody re remember how you felt after receiving the baptism? I remember it just like it was yesterday. No, just like it was last night. I remember it precisely, exactly. I remember everything that happened. I, I remember the, the, the lead up to where the Holy Ghost just gripped my little heart and squeezed it until I, di I didn't think, I, I didn't even know my heart was beating anymore. It was something miraculous. It was something where I knew when that night was over that God's Spirit had come into my life. There was no questioning, well, did it? Maybe it did. No, it wasn't any maybe to it. I knew it. When God comes into your life, you know it. And so let it be the hidden man of the heart in that which is not corruptible, even the ornament of a meek and a quiet spirit which is in the sight of God of great price. After looking at a couple of words in that reading, the word meek comes from a Greek word that means gentle. It means to be mild. It means to be compliant. While quiet means discreet. It means to be calm. It means to be easy. Hallelujah. Some people are so hard to get along with. I mean, some people, you can, you can talk to them for a couple of minutes and you're ready to run. You don't, you don't want to stay. You don't, you don't want to involve yourself in because you know it's going to bring you down. And you know, friends, we as apostolic, Holy Ghost filled, Jesus name baptized Christians, hallelujah, we got to be ready to give an answer to men when they're hungry for God, when they're, when they're lonely, when they're empty. We got to be ready to give something. So often we can get caught up in give me, give me, give me, give me. And there's a lot of people out there that, that are saying, boy, I wish I could get through the day. I wish I could find some joy for my life. I wish I could find some peace for my life. And so you've got something that's special. That hidden man of the heart. Hallelujah. It's not a corruptible situation that you've got involved in your life. Hallelujah. But God has given you peace. God has given you joy. God has given you love for lost humanity. Friends, what you have is valuable. It's valuable above rubies. It's valuable above diamonds. It's valuable above money. It's, it's valuable above anything else that this world can provide. So let it be the hidden man of the heart. According to our reading, let it be the hidden man of the heart who's in charge of wives' lives. Because if this occurs, lost husbands can be transformed by the, by the reaction they have to what God has done for you. I'm guessing that there were a whole lot of lost husbands during this time, so Peter's focused on the women. But I'm preaching if, if all, friends, if everything in my life revolves around that hidden man, if he's in control of my world, if we'll give our God, that hidden man of our heart, the right to stop us when we need to stop, to tell us to go when we need to go, if we'll give him the right to say yes, if we'll give him the right to say no, if we'll give him the right to say to us, slow down, speed up, if we'll give him the right to speak, and then we'll do what he says for us to do, our worlds will be changed. Let me show you something in Acts chapter 10. In this passage, we find that something happens that is going to make a difference for each and every one of us sitting in this building tonight. The Apostle Peter is in the city of Joppa. He goes up to the second floor, onto the roof, and he's there to pray for a while. And then in verse 10 we find, and he became very hungry and would have eaten, but while they made ready, he, he falls into a trance. Notice, Peter goes to pray. He becomes, Scripture says, very hungry, and would have eaten, but God had a different plan for him on this day. It wasn't about food. God simply opens the heavens. And now Peter 
sees something that he's never seen before. We then find out about what he saw in verse 11, and he saw heaven as it opened and a certain vessel descending unto him as it had been a great sheet knitted to four corners and let down to the earth. I, I guess it would be kind of like this little thing here. He knitted up like that, and he sees the heavens open and it comes down and it's got four corners to it, but it's all tied up. So in the beginning, he can't see what's in it. But, but then in verse 12, he gets to looking and, and he sees all manner of four-footed beasts of the earth and wild beasts and creeping things and fowls of the air. And then there's a voice that comes to him and it tells him, Rise, Peter, kill and eat. But Peter said, I don't think so, Lord. For I have never eaten anything that is common or unclean. And the voice spake unto him again the second time. What God hath cleansed, that call thou not common. And this was done three times, and the vessel was received up again into heaven. So, so think about this, church. The hidden man of the heart, this entire time, is preparing his man for what was already heading his way. Peter didn't know that three men were about to knock on the front door of the very house where he was having his vision. But then we find in verse 17, Now while Peter doubted in himself what this vision which he had seen should mean, behold, the men which were sent from Cornelius had made inquiry of, for Simon's house and stood before the gate, and they called and asked whether Simon, which was surnamed Peter, was lodged there. While Peter thought in the vision, the Spirit said unto him, Behold, three men seek thee. So nobody even had to call him. God told him. And while Peter thought of the Spirit, said, Behold, three men seek thee. Arise therefore and get thee down and go with them, doubting nothing, for I have sent them. Then Peter went down to the men which were sent unto him from Cornelius and said, Behold, I am he whom ye seek. What is the cause wherefore ye are come? And they said, Cornelius, the centurion, a just man, and one that feareth God, and of good report among all the nation of the Jews, was warned from God by an holy angel to send for thee into his house and to hear words of thee. I'm sure we noticed here that Peter was very hungry before he had the vision. And guess what? He was very hungry after he had the vision. He was very hungry while they were walking to Cornelius' house because he didn't have the stop, time to stop and eat. And so, and so it didn't matter whether he was hungry. None of this mattered because God was about to open salvation up to the Gentiles. And by the way, that's you and me. Aren't you glad that Peter was attentive on that day. You say, well, what in the world happened here? I'll tell you what happened. The hidden man of the heart just stepped out, took control for a moment, and I, for one, am certainly glad that he did. If everybody here tonight would just think about it, I'll guarantee you there are many times in your life when that hidden man of the heart just stepped out and said, I've got something for you to do for me today. I'm going to lead you to somebody that needs a little bit of what you got. And when we lose sight of that hidden man, what's in us, the hope of glory, when we lose sight of that, Friends, we're not listening for that voice from God to say, to say, I've got something special today. You better be keen. You better be alert. You better be aware because if, you, if you're not, you're going to miss it. What happened was Peter was attentive. And because he was, he brings the gospel to the Gentiles. And here we are a couple thousand years later and Thanks be to God that we've got this baptism of the Holy Ghost. 
which to me is the greatest gift God's ever given. Hallelujah. Friends, that hidden man of the heart speaks to us many times in that still, small voice. It's not a loud, booming voice, but sometimes it's just by impulse. We, we just feel that nudge, and we know that God is directing us to say something, to give somebody a My Five card, uh, to, to go out and, and to minister to somebody today that perhaps we, we, we weren't even expecting. But God puts those opportunities before us. It's in us. It's in us. God is in us. That hidden man of the heart, he's, he, he's giving us opportunities. I don't want to miss an opportunity and somebody end up in the flames of hell because I wasn't keen enough, but I was more focused on what I wanted for the day than what God wanted for the day. Somebody needs to say amen. amen. So God speaks to us in that still, small voice. He, he speaks to us saying, talk to that person. It might not be in that words, but you feel that impulse. Talk to that person. Uh, Sometimes I've had God tell me, pay for that person's groceries. Pay for that person's groceries. And I say, well, don't they have any money? They couldn't be in the store. No, no, he says, pay for that person's groceries. Pay for that person's groceries. And it leads somewhere that I wasn't expecting it to lead. It really wasn't about the groceries at all. It was about where their hearts were. Uh, Sister Sandy told me about a situation that happened in her life at Walmart the other day. And maybe it was a couple months ago where, where God spoke to her and told her to do something. And the lady that she did something, I mean, she just broke down and started weeping uncontrollably. And she said, well, well, who are you? She said, I'm the pastor's wife, First Pentecostal Church. You need to come and visit us. I don't know if she ever came, but I know this. She'll never forget that moment. She'll never forget that moment. Friends, the hidden man of the heart. He'll at times give us a precise word to speak to somebody. God knows where everybody is and what they're going through. And it may be something that doesn't make any sense whatsoever, but that hidden man of the heart will quicken to us and say, say this. And all of a sudden, something will stir in that heart that could not have been stirred except you were sensitive to that hidden man of the heart. And there are those times when we feel that nudge and he leaves it up to us about what to say. Let me tell you something. If you hadn't invited somebody to church lately, you need to get on the ball. You need to shape up. You need, you need to get where you need to you need, you get. You need to get a little closer to God. You need to be inviting people to church. You need to be giving out your My Five cards. You need to let somebody know that there's a greater life for them to live than just going through this world in an aimless, discontented way. I'm telling you, God will never impress us to do a thing without having purpose for giving us that impression. You say, but what if they don't want to hear what I've got to say? And this is many times our problem. We very often, we, we live in this world of ifs. How many people have showed up for church just because you gave them a My Five card? Sister Diane, how many people have showed up for church because y'all went out on Saturday and did visitation and, and handed out those door, put hung, hung those door hangers on doors? How many people? I guarantee you, there. The peop some of the people that you've, you've hung door hangers on their houses forever, but all of a sudden somebody, they've never come to church, but somebody else will show up because give and it shall be given, pressed down, shaken together, running over. It's going to come. You say, well, this one might not come, but somebody else will come because of the effort that was poured into that moment. Amen. Glory to God. Oh, again, what if they don't want to hear I'm just telling you, none of that really matters. God rewards any effort that we make for the kingdom. How many Bible studies has God given you an opportunity to teach? I'm into lesson five of a Bible study, and, and, and our lesson, maybe, maybe it's lesson six. It might be lesson six. And this person has moved to another state, and they call me this week, and they say, how can we continue the Bible study? Because I've got to finish the Bible study. I, I made a commitment to you that I'd finish the Bible study. I said, well, 
uh, my grandson and I are going to get together and we're going to do it through some kind of a, uh, an electronic deal and we're going to teach the Bible study online and we're going to finish the Bible study. And you say, well, why are you going to make an effort for somebody that's not even living in the state where your church is? It's because I love souls, that's first and foremost. But secondly, no reward goes unblessed. No, no effort goes unblessed. And so I'll make an effort here and God will, God will fill somebody else with the Holy Ghost here. God may fill this person with the Holy Ghost there. I don't know, but God's going to bless whatever effort we make. In the kingdom. Well, hallelujah. Hallelujah. I'm telling you, it's God's job to do something with what we do for him. Not my job to make things happen. It's my job to just do what God tells me to do or instructs me to do or nudges me to do. And if I do what I'm supposed to do, God will do what he's supposed to do. Understand, church, 1 Peter 3 and 4 lets us know it's always in our wheelhouse. First Peter 3, 4, it's in our wheelhouse to let it be the hidden man of the heart in that which is not corruptible, even the ornament of a meek and a quiet spirit, which is in the sight of God of great price. So I've just got to do. I've got to be a doer. I can't be somebody that's just satisfied with coming to church. No, I, I've got a great thing that God has bestowed within, upon my life. And now, what am I going to do with it? I, I'm not going to let it just sit here and grow dusty and grow calloused and, and non-usable. No, I'm going to do something with what God has blessed me with. It's always in each of our purview to obey God. We need to be obeyers. We need to be obeyers. You say, well, Brother Sarton, I gave a big offering last week. It's better. Hallelujah. I made a, that was a sacrificial offering. I'll tell you what God's saying to things like that. It's better to obey than to sacrifice. We can sacrifice all we want, but if God speaks to us and says, say this to this person, we can sacrifice all we want in the offering if we have over, if we have not stepped into the arena of soul winning when God gives us an opportunity, then, friends, it's better to obey than to sacrifice. You see, our God's unseen, but he can still be felt. He's unseen, but he can still be heard. He's unseen, but he can still lead. He can even open doors that have been shut for what seems like an eternity. He encourages people, his people, as well as others. He can open doors that have, I mean, I'm telling you, doors that have been slammed before you. He can open them. He can break them down if he has to. He can do it. He strengthens his people. He can and will make a way where there seems to be no way. Brother Sarton, impossible. Nothing is impossible with God. All things are possible. I'm telling you, our God is calm. Our God is cool under fire. He, he's collected. He's not an arrogant Savior. This hidden man of the heart will never lead us down an endless rabbit hole. But there's purpose to whatever he instructs us to do. Whenever there's an unction, whenever there's a a leading, whenever there's a nudge, whenever there's a, a pull, whenever there's, whenever there's any of these things, God is always wanting to do, wanting to perform a miracle for somebody. Well, hallelujah. Let's clap our hands to the Lord. <laughs> hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. I wish somebody would shout out right now, God use me, God use me. God, use me, use me, use me, use me, Lord. Use me, God. Use me, God, to do something for you. Again, 1 Peter 3, 4. But let it be the hidden man of the heart and that which is not corruptible, even the ornament, hallelujah, of a meek and a quiet spirit, which is in the sight of 
of God of great price. Hallelujah. God is unseen, but we wear him as an ornament. Hallelujah. Wherever we go, God goes with us. When you're walking through a grocery store, you can't imagine how many times I've been stopped and asked, what's so different about you? Well, I'm big, and I'm, I got big hands, and I got pretty big feet. That's different. No, what's different about you? That's what they're asking. And then they know. People know. They sense it. It's a, it's a holy thing. It's an, it's an ornament that is unseen, but people know that there's something different about apostolic Holy Ghost filled people. They know it. They can sense it. They just do. You see, God is with us. He's in us. And evidence proving this is we are to have that meek and quiet spirit that in the sight of God is more valuable than any amount of money that people could stick in your front pocket. So many Christian folk allow life to just get them down. They allow life to steal the joy that God placed deep within your heart at Holy Ghost inception. So many allow Satan and his emissaries to steal our peace, which passeth all understanding. I rebuke, I rebuke that old concession, that old concession that is within so many apostolic people. I rebuke that attitude, I rebuke that spirit in the name that is above every name, in the name of Jesus. One said, but I can't get my mind to stay where it needs to stay. Let me tell you what our biggest problem is today. It's that we don't consistently do what the Apostle Peter tells us to do. Back to the Apostle Peter's writings. 1 Peter 5, 6 tells us, Humble yourselves, therefore, under the mighty hand of God, that he might exalt you in due time. We've got to go down so that he can be elevated. Casting all of your care upon him, for he careth for you. I'm worried about this. I'm worried about that, Brother Sarton. You, you need to cast that care upon the Lord. You need to start off your morning tomorrow morning and, and just leave that worry alone. Listen to me. You go to work and you do your best. But at the end of the day, if you went to work and you've done your best, you need to, you need to leave that worry behind you and say, I'm not allowing this to control my peace my joy, I'm not allowing this to steal from me the greatest gift that's ever been given to man. I'm not going to lose the joy of the Holy Ghost. I refuse to do it. Cast all of our care upon him, for he careth for you. Be sober. In other words, be serious-minded. Be vigilant. Be on guard because your adversary, the devil, is a roaring lion, walketh about seeking whom he may devour. How many times have you heard me say this? Some people are devourable, and some people aren't. Friends, verse 9 tells us about those who aren't. It says, be sober, be vigilant, because your adversary, the devil, is a roaring lion, walketh about, seeking whom he may devour. Listen to this. Whom resist steadfast in the faith, knowing that the same afflictions are accomplished in your brethren that are in the world. Resist the devil, and he will flee from you. If you resist the enemy, you are undevourable. If you just give in at the, at the slightest problem that comes your way, he's going to gobble you on down. Verse 10, But the God of all grace who hath called us into his eternal glory by Christ Jesus, after that ye have suffered a while, he will make you perfect. He will establish you. He will strengthen you. And he will settle you on down. You say, I've got a nervous disorder. Put yourself in God's hands before you start your day every day of your life. And I'm telling you, you'll have peace that passeth understanding. Anybody want peace? If you want peace, say, Lord, I, I put myself in your hands today. There ain't nothing that's going to come along today that you and I cannot handle together, God. No devil's too big that God can't run him clean out of the country. No problem's too large that 
you can't get the victory over it. I'm telling you in Jesus' name, God is greater than anything that can, can possibly come your way. Hallelujah. I want you to notice, Peter didn't say we wouldn't encounter things. What he said was we wouldn't have to allow those things to stay. Huh. Well, God, I thought everything was going to be perfect. Well, everything is, in, is perfect after a while. Some things come our way. Brother Jeff and Lauren's been out of their house for a little bit. Sister Michelle's been out of her house for a little bit. He didn't say things aren't going to come. We go through things. But again, he's not going to allow those things to stay. That's not the permanency of the situation. What comes our way is temporary. And if we'll just hang in there, hallelujah, after we've gone through a little bit, again, he's going to make us perfect. He's going to establish. He's going to strengthen. He's going to settle us. It's going to be okay. 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 I'm telling you, the hidden man of the heart can help with whatever ails you. Hmm. I wish somebody would just say that to yourself. God, I believe you can help me. God, I really believe you're willing to help me. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Galatians chapter 5, we find the apostle writing about the works of the flesh as well as the fruit of the Spirit. Verse 19 goes like this. Now the works of the flesh are manifest, which are these, adultery, fornication, uncleanness, lasciviousness, idolatry, witchcraft, hatred, variance, emulations, wrath, strife, seditions, heresies, envyings, murders, drunkenness, revelings, and such like, of the which I tell you before, as I have also told you in time past, that they which do such things shall not inherit the kingdom of God. Now that's all flesh. Every, every bit of that has to do with flesh. So, we got all of these fleshly things that if we do these things, friends, if we don't get right with God, we're going to have problems. So, so think about this. We can choose to embrace the works of the flesh or the counterbalance to flesh is found in verse 22 that tells us, but the fruit of the Spirit is love, it's joy, it's peace, it's long-suffering, it's gentleness, it's goodness, it's faith. It's meekness, it's temperance. Against such there is no law. And they that are Christ's have crucified the flesh with the affections and lust. If we live in the Spirit, let us also walk in the Spirit. Let me tell you what I'm so very thankful for. I'm so very thankful for the hidden man of the heart. I'm thankful that I can refuse the chains of the flesh. I can refuse depression. I can refuse fear. I can refuse doubt. I can refuse confusion and despair. I can refuse to embrace the negative. I can refuse to embrace hate. I can refuse flesh, and all because, here it is, I have the hidden man of the heart in that which is not corruptible, even the ornament of a meek and a quiet spirit, which in the sight of God is of great price. Ha! Huh. I'm thankful because on March 18, 1968, I received that hidden man of the heart in that which is not corruptible. Even the ornament of a meek and a quiet spirit, I received that man into my life. Some folks don't readily appreciate all that they have. They focus on the one thing that they don't have and the 
because they don't have that one thing, they can never be happy. Friends, you better start thinking about the things that you do have. Hallelujah. God is great, and he is greatly to be praised. Hallelujah. God is great and greatly to be praised. God has been good to every single one of us. God has been good. He has been good. He has been good. He has been good. He has been good. You need to say that at least 20 times a day. God is good. God is good. Oh, my Lord, Sister Melissa, God is good. Is he good or what? God is so good. Man, 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 man. Oh, my Lord, I don't know what my life would be if I didn't have God. I don't, have a, don't want to know what my life would be if I didn't have God. Uh, God is so good, Brother Bruce. God is so good. Hallelujah. Some of the things that we endure, it's kind of like the apostles walking into the city where they weren't received, and you know what they did? They shook the dust off of their shoes, walked on out, and went to a city that wanted them to be there. You can focus on those that don't want you there. You can focus on those that do want you there. You can focus on what you don't have or you can focus on what God's about to give you. (laughs) Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. 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 Let's all stand. I was reading about a beautiful figure in one of Wordsworth's poems of a bird that was swept from Norway by this huge storm that came through. This bird battled against the storm with all of his might. He was eager to wing his way back home. All of it was to no avail. And so at last, the bird yielded, thinking that the gale would carry it to its ultimate death. However, before the bird hardly knew what happened, the gale had carried it on to sunny England with its green meadows and its forest glades. And I just wonder tonight how many of us have been like that little voyager, fretting and fighting all along the way. Life carries us first this way and then that. Before life's done, we feel as though we've been utterly forsaken. We, we have thought perhaps it was over for us. No way out. Never make it back. And yet God was about to change the scenery in our lives. You see, the big picture is the entire time we struggled, God has ever been in control. We've worried, we've fretted, we've twisted, we've turned, we've fought against the winds that the world has brought our way when the entire time, if we've just turned loose, And let God, everything would have ended up just as God intended. Jesus in John 3, 8 said, The wind bloweth where it listeth. Thou hearest the sound thereof, but canst not tell whence it cometh and whither it goeth. So is everyone that is born of the Spirit. Friends, if you've got the baptism of the Holy Ghost, if you went under that water in the precious name of Jesus, God's got you. God's got you. Oh, we feel like that little bird that seemed by only happenstance to be caught up in that violent wind. And yet God had his loving arms wrapped around us every leg of the journey. And we both, all of us, I don't know how many are here tonight, but we've all got that hidden man of the heart working miracles for us day in, day out. We're depressed, 
but God's still working. We're downcast, but God's still working. We're, we've blown off course, but God's still working. He's going to bring us back where we need to be. Uh, things are not right over here. Well, there's going to be a balance that's going to bring us back in alignment. Everything, All things work together for good to those that love the Lord, to those who are called according to His purpose. I'm stressed, I'm frazzled. I've been on the roller coaster time and time again. It's okay. It's okay. It's okay. Again, I say, God's got you. In closing, Philippians 4.11, not that I speak in respect of want, for I have learned in whatsoever state I am therewith to be content. I know both how to be abased and I know how to abound. Everywhere and in all things I am instructed both to be full and to be hungry, both to abound and to suffer need. This is, a word, this is something you need to memorize. You need to memorize. You need to memorize it. And every time something happens that causes you to wonder, you need to say these words, I can do all things through Christ which strengtheneth me. I can do all things through Christ which strengtheneth me. Oh, another devil, I can do all things through Christ which strengtheneth me. Shipwreck, I can do all things through Christ which strengtheneth me. Hallelujah. Why don't you lift your hands right now? Everybody but my brother on the back. He can't lift both hands, but lift one of them if you can, Brother Richie, and just tell the Lord, Lord, I love you. I can do all things through Christ, which strengtheneth me. I can do all things. I can do all things through Christ, which strengtheneth me. You can do all things. Through Christ, which strengtheneth you. You can do all things. You can do all things. I can do all things. I can do all things. I can do all things. Hallelujah. I just feel like saying this. I've been, you've been offended. I can do all things through Christ, which strengtheneth me. Let me tell you, Jesus was offended and he got over it. Yes, yes, I can do all things. That's your, new word, that's, your new, that's your new line for this week. I can do all things. You believe it, Sister Lauren? You believe it? Amen. Hallelujah. Lord, we love you so much. We thank you for the word tonight, God. Lord God, let us go through this week and be victorious. Let's go through this week, Lord, and triumph over the enemy of our souls. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. In Jesus' precious name, I love you, church. You're dismissed. See you Sunday.